Hey guys, I'm really excited about today's video. I'm actually going to share a problem that I created on my own. Um, it's an IP and I just want to clarify that in no way am I a professor or necessarily someone qualified to create these problems. Um, but I just kind of wanted to do it for fun. And after all this research that I've done in the summer, I thought it would be cool to make one on my own. And also, the other reason I want to create one is I have, I run a small apparel business, um, which I'll pull up in a second. And so that's what this problem is based off of, um, assuming that I'm going to do a trunk show for this business and um, trying to maximize the profits for a trunk show and um, the apparel I would sell. So I actually kind of wanted to see if maybe this would work and maybe I could actually apply it. Um, and maybe it would help you guys understand why um, linear programming is applicable to real life situations and why it's important and how we can actually use it to maximize or minimize situations. So um, hopefully this video helps you see how I applied it to my business and um, maybe I'll give an update of whether or not this actually worked in real life. So um, I'm just going to pull up kind of the summary I did of my problem. Um, that's not it. No, my computer's freezing. Okay, so um, I'm also going to pull up my website just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I make college apparel um, and my website is called shopcollegechick.com and it's super fun. I make them out of t-shirts and let's see if the page loads with all the different types of outfits. Um, so these are the outfits I make. Like I have like a sweatshirt set, like a cutoff sweatshirt. Um, and I've actually done pretty well with them so far and it's really fun. Uh, but I do need certain types of t-shirts for um, the jersey and the hoodie set. So that's where like constraints come in and I just thought this would be a great problem to do this off of. So um, I kind of wrote this all out here. So I said, Kaylee is hosting a trunk show for her small college apparel business. She has five types of shirts she wants to use. The jersey shirt, sweatshirt, red, black, and white. And we are assuming that this is an NC State trunk show. Don't ask why I picked NC State because I am not a Wolfpack fan. Um, but I kind of pulled out the t-shirt so you can see. And I'm using the exact prices. So again, this is um, like a real life problem. So I wanted, I want to use this red shirt. Um, this is the jersey shirt I used to make the jersey set. Oh my gosh. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. So then, um, this is, I think this is the sweatshirt I wanted. It was one of these and, and I included the actual price. I wanted this black NC State shirt and then there was also, um, let's see, where is it? this white one. I really like this one. Um, so then also on top of that we have um, these different styles that I want to produce in the trunk show and I kind of showed you these. There's the crisscross halter set, there's a crisscross set, crop top, they're just different styles. Um, the hoodie set and the jersey set and then off the shoulder as well. So um, I wrote those all out and then each shirt has an associated cost like I said and each style has a different price that I set and you can see all those here so feel free to pause the video um, and then I also have a bunch of requirements and I kind of tweaked this as I went along and as I got the solution I kind of adjusted what I wanted um, but I do have a budget for each chunks trunk show around 300 for now I'm just gonna say 300 I'm not sure if that's what I'll actually use um, so our constraints are that um, actually you know what I'm just gonna explain the constraints when I actually do them so of course we start off with front pulp import and then our sets are gonna be um, the shirt type let me just make sure I'm doing this the same because there is a part I need to copy and paste because it's too long. Okay, so shirts. Actually, I'm going to copy and paste the constraints or the um, sets just so, just for the sake of time. Okay, so 
Um, these are all the different types of shirts. There's a jersey, a sweatshirt, red, black, and white. And just so you don't get the jersey shirt confused with the jersey style, I put an S after that one. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is input our parameters, which are just our costs and our prices. So the cost parameter, just going to make sure I call that the same thing. Um, let's copy and paste that as well. I swear I'm not being lazy. I just don't want to mess up one little um, different letter since I already did this all and I have to copy and paste the constraints. Um, anyways, so I put each price, they should be the same over here, each price for the different types of sets and then the cost that, um, the cost for me, not the cost for the customer. Um, how much it costs me to buy that shirt. Um, and then next we're going to set our problem variable, LP problem. I'm just going to call that college and we are maximizing our profits. So we're only going to have one decision variable and that's just going to be the amount to produce. So our x underscore bears is going to have two subscripts. I is going to be um, for shirts and then j is going to be for sets. So if we produce xij, um, it's going to be the amount of, let's say, red shirt, red shirt crisscross sets that we produce or maybe black crop tops we produce. So um, and it is going to be LP integer because you, I don't want to have the program give me back like 1.5 red crop tops because that doesn't really make any sense. So um, I am doing LP integer. So let's just make sure I do this the same. LP variable dot DICTS. And we do need to create a loop because there's two subscripts. So we say for I in shirts and then line that up and say for J in sets. And don't be confused with what I call sets and like sets in linear programming. Sets are like the different styles. I call them sets because it's like a, a shirt and a skirt. Um, anyways, so then we have our zero non LP integer. So there's no upper bound and zero is our lower bound. Let's see how much time. So then I want to maximize the profit. So I'm going to sum over the price. So in other words, the, the money that um, the sales that I'm getting. So LP sum, that should not be capitalized. LP sum price. Um, this is going to be index J because J is for sets and these, um, the price is referring to the sets. So price J times X underscore fares. And remember that when we have, um, two subscripts, we need to do our bracket I comma J in our objective function and constraints. And because we are using both the I and the J, we can say for I in shirts and for J in sets and just keep them right next to each other with no comma or anything. And then we are going to subtract the sum of our costs for buying the shirt. So cost index I because this is referring to the shirts and I already set it up here so we want to keep it consistent. Let's say X bears again I comma J for I in shirts. Oh. <laughs> Not that, for <laughs> J in sets. Okay, and then I'm just going to double check that I wrote that correctly. Um, and then I guess we probably have time for one more for the constraints. I'm just going to quickly ah, explain this really complicated constraint that we have. Nope. I want to copy and paste this. So... Let's see. Again, I'm copy and pasting this because it's such a long constraint, but I'm going to move this out so you can copy and paste it, or not copy and paste it, so you can pause the video. Um, constraints. 
So our first constraint is that only a jersey shirt can be used to produce the jersey set style. So what I did is I wrote out each different type of shirt that wasn't the jersey shirt and um, I did comma jersey s and um, you can't really do a loop for that because um, that would include the jersey shirt so you kind of have to write out each one so I said that all the amount produced of all of those is equal to zero so that makes that ensures that um, no jersey set is created with like a black t-shirt or a white t-shirt etc because we can only use the jersey shirt for the jersey set um, and then the second one was for the hoodie so this ensures that no t-shirts or the jersey shirt um, are used for the hoodie set because you can't make a sweatshirt set out of a t-shirt because that's kind of the point is that it's a sweatshirt so that sums all those to zero just make sure you're not indexing it with brackets like um, around each one they have to be comma just like up here they have to be the same format or syntax um, but then it may seem redundant but you actually have to do this for the jersey shirt as well so we want to make sure the sum of all the different types of sets produced with the jersey shirt equals zero because we want to make sure um, since we have this constraint of course no jersey sets will be created with the jersey shirt but this doesn't limit the jersey shirt um, to be produced it doesn't it allows there still to be a jersey shirt crisscross set so we have to make sure that we also include those constraints so you do that for the jersey shirt and for the sweatshirt um, you just sum all the different styles equal to zero I know again that seems redundant but it doesn't work if you just have the first two constraints let me just pull this out so you can pause it that should be everything just don't forget this equals zero